Financial markets can be wildly volatile. We've seen in the past 24 hours that Bitcoin has been coming down. This leads many on social media to say, who the heck is selling Bitcoin? But it's not just Bitcoin. If you're not inside the crypto market, you might be saying, who the heck is selling Nvidia, Microsoft, Apple? The list goes on. In this video, I'm going to give you a really good insight into what you need to look for. The news is always searching for the cause or the reason. However, the cause or the reason cannot be found in real time unless you're looking at the charts. You're going to find this particular video really, really helpful. Let's run the numbers. Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the CTKS Method. Rule 242, charts reflect real-time news. You need the real-time pulse of the market and you get that from the charts. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back CTKS family. The thing to remember is that there are all sorts of different charts. In fact, the tier 1 charts are the engine of financial markets globally. You must keep your eyes on the tier 1 charts, they're vitally important. These tier 1 charts will move your charts. Long-time viewers of our community understand that price is always moving between structural levels and CTKS structure is the strongest statistically significant structure in existence for structural resistance levels and structural support levels. And if you're interested in learning all about it, Joe has offered a very kind CTKS Partial Masterclass Scholarship. This is getting close to being awarded. Your name could be here. If you're interested, please reach out to me at ctksmethod at gmail.com or directly message me on X. Links are in the description of this video. When you see posts like this, it's very easy to consider that there must be just one or two reasons for price to move down or to move up. But this is actually not the case. All charts are intercorrelated and interconnected. When we look at the Russell 2000 index, one of the things that we see, this blue line is Bitcoin. For many videos, I've been saying that blue line, the Bitcoin blue line, is literally the canary in the coal mine. Bitcoin is the most risk on or risk off or risk sensitive asset class in existence. If Bitcoin senses there could be trouble inside the market, a bit of a sell down, it will react. That's what it's meant by canary in the coal mine. Basically, when the miners went down many, many years ago, they had a canary in a birdcage. If there were toxic gases in the mine, the canary would unfortunately die. That meant that the miners had a timeline, get out or go with the canary. But Bitcoin is a little bit different. It's the canary in the coal mine that comes back to life. And it's certainly showing a bit of a sign of life at the current time. When Nvidia reported after the close of the main session, we got a real dump in there, but that has since recovered pretty much in the S&P 500. When you look at the Russell, it's been doing not too badly. The Dow, not bad at all. And the Nasdaq, a little bit under stress. Coming back to our question, who the heck is selling Bitcoin? It really depends on the main markets. Bitcoin is a highly risk sensitive asset class. It can feel it before the major indices do. And I believe that's all that's happened just recently. Typically, when the VIX explodes upward, we find risk on asset classes exploding downwards. It's really often hard to see the causal relationships or the interdependencies between charts. Sometimes you have to invert a chart. And what you can see right here is that Bitcoin was feeling it first before the VIX felt it. This means the VIX was actually spiking up during this period of time. I've just inverted the scale. And you can see Bitcoin was selling down before the VIX was doing that. One thing that just is really complicated inside financial markets, many people just think it's always a one-to-one -one relationship. If the VIX is spiking up, hey, the other must be following it in absolute lockstep. That's not the way things work. You, unfortunately, it's not. 
After being inside financial markets for nearly four decades, I wish it worked that way. And I wish I could tell you that's the way it works, but it doesn't. You often have what I call a changing of the guards. And Bitcoin does tend to feel at first. That's the canary in the coal mine idea. So as Bitcoin was coming down, it was in fact telling us, hey, be careful in the stock market. You could be coming down as well. That's why I say looking at Bitcoin and the stock market is really good. But Ken, you've been in the stock market so long. Why are you looking at this crypto stuff? Isn't it for scammers and people who are bad and... Oh my God, that's just the banking association telling you to keep your money in the bank for the best possible return of a couple of percent per year if you're lucky. And what you really need to understand, crypto just like AI is a new thing. It's just changing with the times. Now, what we're seeing right now is the DXY is spiking up. Typically, there's an inverted relationship between the DXY and also crypto. Now, what does this mean? Does this mean we expect Bitcoin to come down hard because the DXY is going up hard? Let me uninvert that for you. You see that? Is that what we are anticipating? Well, that could be something on the cards. Just put on your radar. But so long as the major indices start or continue to go up, continue their ascent, everything is fine. In order to answer who is selling Bitcoin, but I could easily say who is selling Apple, who is selling Tesla, who is selling silver. There are so many things that that applies to. Just don't look at one asset class. You have to tier your charts together. But most importantly, tiering the charts is a good idea. And a tier just means popping them all into the same bucket. You really need to look at the structural levels because they determine price waves. The S&P 500 is a particularly important chart to look at structurally. It's kind of the granddaddy of them all. If the S&P 500 is coming down, ouch, you're going to find a lot of things are going to follow it. And crypto is unfortunately one of those. A lot of people say, oh no, Ken, crypto is just completely separate from the stock market. And is it completely separate from the bond market? Typically, the people who talk about these things don't even understand how the major financial markets move together, which is really unfortunate because they typically have hundreds of thousands of followers. Go figure. Anyway, let's have a look at the structure on this. What we saw with the S&P 500, we had a enormous degree of structural overhead resistance. Now, what does that mean? In order for the price to get up to A and go above A, it needed to overcome so much selling resistance, so much sell pressure. There was just so many sellers in here saying, thou shall not pass. You're not going any further than this. But where was the flaw in all of that? Around that 5,600 level. Now, what happened at that particular floor? Because there were so many sellers and they were causing this structure to fail, which means it was just making a series of lower highs all the way through. What did that mean? Combined with a negative fair value gap, this particular structure just did not hold. We had some holding of the C structure and then just pushing down. But one thing to always bear in mind, structural levels tell us where we need to be careful, where we need to be cautious and where we need to be greedy. It literally takes Warren Buffett's quote of be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. And it just makes it real time on the charts. What was happening to the world's most risky asset class and the one that we adore and love, it was weakening. But you can see it's starting to turn around. Does this mean that structurally we're going to see a breach in this 5608, a fill of this positive fresh air gap or positive fair value gap and arrive around the 5632? Or does it mean that we still have negative price momentum and we're coming down to the 5541 mark? In other words, do you think we're going to stay around B for the S&P 500, head up to A, or come down to see. Please let me know in the comments. 
one thing that our beloved global family does, and if you're new, a very warm welcome. What we do is that we always think in terms of three dimensions. Yes, the price could go up and yes, the price could come down, but it all depends on structural fails and structural passes. That is exactly what the market is about. And then when you combine it with negative fair value gaps and positive fair value gaps and the spacing and structure that exists inside the market as well as its strength, it's an absolute game changer. Unfortunately, so many people just look at a chart like this and try to figure out where it's going, not basing it on the more than 55,000 data points that exist for this specific chart. That's a statistical problem. Personally, I've never understood why traders and investors get so tribal of uh, so many things. It's just bizarre. You have so many stock market investors and traders saying, oh, I would never look at crypto. That is below and beneath me. For goodness sake, look at it if it gives you a signal. If it doesn't give you a signal, just ignore it. But it totally gives you a signal. But uh, so many people just listen to mainstream media news. And the mainstream media, oh yeah, they're there to help you, right? Okay, let's look at something else. When we look at Bitcoin's price action, that's represented by these blue lines across these different old projects. When we look at Ethereum, we can see that Ethereum is starting to get a bit of strength in there. We're liking this. What about Binance coin? Yeah, that is. Solana, eh, just kind of following Bitcoin's gravitational pull, but this thing could blow when it gets going. What about XRP? Not too bad. Doge, yeah, it's okay. Ada, whoa, look at Ada. Ada is really showing signs of life and Ada often just goes for it before the market kicks in and rallies. Why does it do this? The reason is Ada, unfortunately, is quite weak structurally. Now, what does that mean? It means that the price gets pushed down, but when the shorts and have liquidated all the longs, it's now the shorts turn to get liquidated and the shorts go heavy and hard into Cardano or ADA. And then they get obliterated just like they've been doing to the longs. This is how the world works. So getting back to this, who in the bleep is selling Bitcoin? It's not just about Bitcoin. It's about the entire financial system. Bitcoin was picking up, pre-picking up, canary in the coal mine kind of picking up that there was a weakness exhibiting itself under the engine, under the hood, inside the engine of global financial markets. So it said, hey, I'll go first. And where did it go? It went down to structural support levels. It went through the 60,800 and it's just tipping in to around the 58,100 level. These are structural support levels. I'm gonna view in to a slightly marked up or more marked up chart. This is a particular fractal that we have been looking at. And we see that we've had a bit of a pullback. We would have wanted a pullback like this but instead we got a pullback like this. Now the question is, is this a start of a deeper correction? If it is, we need to use our three-dimensional logic and just plan out what our actions will be. But the fortunate thing is that there is structural support through this area. Bitcoin is currently trading at 59,545. What is this structural area? that you speak of can. It's between 55,898 and 58,811. Now, what does that mean? It means that yes, we could go lower, but we've filled a negative fair value gap and we could also fill that positive fair value gap and move back to the 61,400. That would completely catch the shorts off guard. The shorts are saying, no, 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 you, you can't come back. Once, as soon as it goes red, it must go red forever. Which is pretty much what the longs say. As soon as it goes green, it must go green forever. Hang on a second, what's happened there? I thought it was supposed to go green forever. Nah, it doesn't work like that. 
Why doesn't it work like that? Because price is always moving between structural levels. If it can't get above, it's going to the one below. If it can't get above, it's going to the one below. But if there is a confluence through the tier one, tier two and tier three charts, it can cut through and go to the one below that. It's all about passes and fails. Let's have a quick look at gold and look at the structural levels on gold. You'll find that everything is intercorrelated and interconnected. We're basically looking at 70,000 days worth of data. Now I'm going to pop on the structural indicator. What we're going to see now is the structure across all of that. We can see that gold is currently reacting to this 2516 structural level. It's just a little bit below it. Now, what does that mean? If we don't get above this structural level, we're opening up structural levels below. And if we open up structural levels below, that's in all likelihood where we're going. I'll give you an example back here. You can see that price rallied from that 2516 mark all the way up to just below 2526, but it couldn't confirm it as structural support. It kept on rejecting, rejecting, made a really good valiant effort and got donged on the head. And therefore, if it can't pass this level, where's it going to? The next structural level below. And when, what happened then? Because we had a negative fair value gap, we passed and overshot the level. These are not brick walls. These are like trampolines, as Beardy says. They're really gravitational areas. We can overshoot and we do. What happened next? An underside retest. We didn't get above that structural resistance level at all. If so, where were we heading? To this structural support around that 2504 level. You can see how just incredibly brilliant this is. What you can see is where the buyers will come in and where the sellers will come in. When we didn't hold the 2504 level, what did we pop down to? The 2494 level and rebounded. These gravitational areas are very important to keep your eye on. What about when we look at something like silver, can this give us an understanding of what's happening to Bitcoin? Yes, it can. Silver is real yield sensitive. What that means is simply that the real yield or yields after inflation are very important for commodities such as gold and silver. Silver has a little bit more to it because of its uses, but it's still really, really important. But we can just look at it structurally. Let's do so. Let's just pop on this structural indicator and check out what's cooking inside silver. We saw that this particular 3005 level was a very key structural resistance level. We tried to get above, yep, not going on. Try to get above, try to get above, and then we started failing. You must be aware of where your safety nets are, especially in very turbulent market conditions. And if you get fair value gaps inside the market from a negative side or from a positive side, Things can move down very quickly and they can move up just as quickly. You must know where they are before they form. This in technical analysis is literally a fantasy to detect a fair value gap before it forms. Now you know why the CTKS method is literally the world's most powerful smart money buy and sell level detection system because it can do so. It can do so and does so, and it's been doing it for years. Now, what does this mean to silver, all of this structure in here? Let's just zoom in a little bit. A really key level for silver to get above is that 29.75 level. We want to pass here. So far, we have put in a failure, which is actually opening up lower levels of structural support. That means that if things don't turn around, we could be going to the 29.30 mark. And that's a potential because if we cut under a structural support level, we would anticipate to go lower on structural support levels. However, if things turn around because we are actually at a structural support level now, I'll just give you a quick view of what I see. That's just a little bit easier. You can see at that 2951, there is a structural support level. 
And this is a good idea. If you can't see some of the structural levels, you can certainly see it if you do this kind of overlay. If we start to lose 2951, we're in all probability going to come through this negative fair value gap and overshoot, come back and retest and potentially move down to lower structural levels. If we confirm this is support, we need to move past 2965 and then 2975 in order to have bullish momentum inside the market. For many, many years, I traded gold and silver, just beautiful things to trade. But I love crypto because of the volatility inside the market. You can make incredible returns. It's like, what do you want to go for? A job that pays you X thousand or 10X per year? Well, if the answer is you want to get as much as you possibly can, say 10X per year, when you put the same amount of effort into a job, hey, pick the 10X rather than the X considering all the other things are equal, of course. Well, that's crypto for me. That's how I look at it. And if I wasn't a statistician, if I didn't come from an actuarial science background, I may look at things differently. But being a statistician, I look at the statistics of crypto and it's just intriguing. Therefore, what caused the sell-off in Bitcoin? The markets were weakening. We already saw that inside silver as well. But we've also seen silver starting to turn around. So any potential pullbacks could actually be met with buy demand. This is why you need to do so much analysis in order to understand and not gamble. The good thing is at least we've pinged this structural area of support. There is support underneath here for Bitcoin. And that means we're likely to come up around that 61 400 mark. If we manage to push through it, because Nvidia actually reported that AI is in fact the new industrial revolution. It's not a fake rally. It's a complete change in society. And you better learn how to trade and invest because Quite frankly, I feel very scared for people and their job security going forward in the years to come. You're not going to be competing against other people. You're going to be competing against robots. Unfortunately, if you don't learn how to manage your money and how to make money in different ways, and the market will always have their share of gamblers in it, and that will always add volatility inside every financial market and always opportunity for people who know what they're doing. As a member of the global CTKS family, we don't need to look for reasons why price comes down. It's often just a structural fail, a negative fair value gap, and hitting structural support. If it weakens and fails again, it's just moving down to structural support levels. We see this every single day. This is normal. You don't have to look for a reason. And it doesn't matter what chart you look at. Here we're looking at Solana. So we saw that 153 structural fail coming down to structural support uh, just a little bit south of 147. And then coming down into stronger, stronger structural support around that 141 to 141.60. And you, when it comes to trading and investing, you don't have to just trade and invest at structural levels. You can trade in between them. And when you understand that you don't need big percentages to make big percentages, oh my goodness, it's a total game changer. You can do incredibly well. If you pop across to ctksmethod.org and don't forget to sign up to the newsletter. If you just go down, you'll see how that you can make a lot of profit out of crypto. And there's some very good videos. I've just popped them all together for you there. But the real key is you need to buy and sell professionally. Don't guess. No. Our global family doesn't care about statements like this. We simply look at structural passes and structural fails. If it's failing, we need to know where the structural support is inside the market. And we can always zoom out. And if you're really committed, I would suggest you apply for the CTKS Partial Masterclass Scholarship. You could be an awardee. It will definitely change how you view financial markets. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends. And Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again in the next video. And don't forget, please let me know A, B or C. Bye for now.